Hey everyone, uh, my name is Richard Husky. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Communication at UC Davis. And I'm here to talk to you today about some research that my co-author uh, Leandro Calconota and I have been working on, uh, organized around trying to measure reaction time latency accuracy. So how accurate the software we use to capture reaction time latencies is. Okay, and so I'll start kind of in the theme of this year's ICA by talking about the open measures that we've, uh, or the open science practices that we've adopted in the study. First, the data are available on uh, our project's GitHub page, as is the code to replicate and reanalyze the result, or I should say reproduce the result. Uh, the uh, stimulus and materials to conduct the study are available on the uh, GitHub page. And the uh, hardware we actually use in the study is also open source hardware and uh, is available for purchase right at the, you know, right on Amazon or something like that uh, for a remarkably low price. And so we include all the schematics for how to build it up as well. So this is uh, a really open project. Okay. So uh, if we think about uh, the field of communication and also just the field of uh, behavioral and social sciences more generally, uh, there's been some push now for a while towards more naturalistic behavioral paradigms. Uh, here's just a couple papers that I really admire quite a bit, several authored by communication scholars that make the case for why it is we need naturalistic behavioral tasks and how, us, how those sort of tasks can help us test theory. Well, uh, my lab, like I said, is a big believer in these sort of tasks. And one of the uh, things we've done is help develop a game that lets us do exactly that. Here you're seeing a brief clip of a game we developed called Asteroid Impact that uh, is something that players can uh, do in the lab. Uh, basically, they have a little spaceship. It's their mouse cursor. They drag the spaceship around. They collect crystals on the screen or targets, all while avoiding little asteroids that are bouncing around the screen. And as a researcher, you can uh, specify everything in the game, how many asteroids there are, how many targets people need to collect, how many complete and so on. And all of this gets content analyzed automatically for you. Pretty cool, right? One feature of the game is a reaction time component or a response latency component. Basically, you present a probe and measure the latency between the onset of the probe and when this uh, participant responds. Uh, this is a classic secondary task reaction time measure or STRT in the way that Annie Lang and her colleagues have described it. And in Asteroid Impact's case, you can present two types of probes. Visual probes, where something appears on the screen, or an auditory probe, a probe where uh, some sort of tone is uh, uh, made available for the participants to hear. Right? And so our question was, how accurate is Asteroid Impact in measuring response latencies or secondary task reaction time measures to these probes? And well, when we were first developing the game, uh, we did some early tests to find out if asteroid impact was accurate. And our answer was yes, but I'll admit like those tests were pretty preliminary, right? We had a task in mind we wanted to do. We needed asteroid impact to measure reaction time latencies. And so we quickly tested to see, hey, is this going to work with the specific task we have in mind? And the answer was yes. But we don't know how well, we didn't know a lot about how well or how accurate asteroid impact was in terms of measuring response latencies and the extent to which it was a good tool for measuring response latencies for other types of tasks. And uh, so basically what we did is we said, we need a better study. We need a study that's actually gonna let us get a sense of what is the ground truth accuracy for asteroid impact. And so we developed a technique for letting us do that. What the study I'm gonna talk with you about today does is it accounts for several different sources of response latency error that might be present in asteroid impact. Specifically, the type of operating system used, the version of Python that is used, uh, is it, are you running asteroid impact in Python 2, or are you using the new version in, that Jacob Fisher helped port over to Python 3? Uh, what type of trial are you using? Visual, auditory, does that contribute to response latency error? And we need a task that is something that you tomorrow can go and implement in your lab uh, affordably and without a lot of work and makes uh, the results that we gather comparable to other tasks. And so to do that, we built up a little microcontroller, a little microcontroller 
uh, we got an Adreno and a breadboard and basically wired up a couple of things. First, we wired up something called a light resistant diode, uh, which is what you see circled here. All it does is detect changes in luminance. The second thing we did is we wired up a little microphone. This checks, checks for changes in sound. When the light resistant diode or this microphone detected either a change in luminance or a change in sound, it instructed the Adreno to respond with a key press that asteroid impact could pick up. So basically in the lab, we kept calling this the fake human project. The microcomputer was our fake human. When it detected a change, it responded with a key press. And the benefit of this fake human is it is accurate. It always responds in the exact same way uh, with the exact same latency. So the, basically the Adreno isn't a variable source of error, but there are other sources of error that it lets us uh, capture. Right? And so what do we do? We gathered some data. What you're gonna see here is a video of the auditory and visual trial uh, data collection. On the left, what you see is the screen would be black until a white flash would appear. When the white flash would appear, the Adreno would detect that change in luminance and respond with the key press, the flash goes away. On the right, you see uh, the, key, uh, the Adreno set up to detect changes in sound. Here, a tone would play like you just heard. And when the Adreno picked up the change in sound, it responds with the key press and the tone stops. Okay, and so the first thing we might do is we might look at how did the data look like? What did the data look like? Okay, well, uh, the, what are we looking for before we even go to that slide? The goal, the best case scenario would be two things. We would see um, a small mean response latency. So that would basically say asteroid impact can detect changes really quite rapidly. The second thing we would hope to see is a small standard deviation around that mean. Basically, it would say there's not a much variability in the response. There's not much variability in the error. The error rate is small or, and the variability around the error is small also. And so what do we see? Looking at rain cloud plots for the main effects, we see a couple of things. Python 3 has a nice looking distribution, uh, a nice clear mode, and not too much variation around it. When we look at operating system, we see similar patterns for Windows, but not necessarily uh, and kind of for Mac, but not very much at all for uh, Ubuntu. When we look at trial type, uh, we get a little bit more complicated of a picture. But I want to point out again, these are just the main effects here. These are the ring cloud plots for the main effects. We really have an interaction effect. And so what does that interaction effect look like? Well, here you see the data for that. We have a significant three-way interaction and the results are pretty clear. If you're using uh, asteroid impact for your research in the lab, you probably want to use a Windows machine. Maybe not perfectly. If you're doing auditory work, uh, the evidence seems to be that uh, maybe Mac performs a little bit better, but if you're trying to include both trial types in your study, a Windows machine has a response latency error of about 60 to 70 milliseconds, which is really pretty good. Okay but you probably don't want to use Linux. That's that middle panel here and not looking so good, frankly. So what are the implications? Well, one thing we know is these response latency errors are actually very comparable to other commercial software. Uh, we built our Adreno based on some other uh, labs that have done similar work. And what they've discovered is um, that all response latency software will not all actually, um, 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 PsychoPy does particularly well, but most re, uh, response latency software has errors in these uh, in this sort of neighborhood. Um, so that's pretty good. Like we're, you know, we have some comparable accuracy to other tools people are already using. We see that the version of Python doesn't matter too much, but you should probably not use Ubuntu. You should probably just use Windows if you're using Asteroid Impact in your lab. And so to wrap up, I actually just want to uh, pause briefly on this great paper I like from Anthony Greenwald, there's nothing so theoretical as a good method. He argues in this paper that a strong theory method synergy is crucial to advancing scientific progress, and I certainly agree. Uh, here, we've demonstrated that if you're using asteroid impact to measure re reaction time latencies in your lab, you have a pretty good method. And so maybe we can use it for uh, advancing theory as well.
And so with that, I'll say all the code to make this happen is available. Uh, download it, run it in your own lab. The hardware costs about 30 bucks. We have schematics for you so you can build it. It's not challenging. Uh, and I wanna say a big thanks to my co-author Leandro who did a lot of heavy lifting on this project. Thank you very much.